And now this. Markets are up because Wall Street expects tax cuts in the new year. One of President-elect Trump's biggest promises, massive tax cuts for corporations, that's what's going to happen. Let's bring in Peter Morisi, professor of economics. That's it, isn't it? This is, that's why this market is up, because we expect, we demand tax cuts <laughs> fairly soon. That's why it's up, isn't it? Well, that's got a lot to do with it. It's also how we're going to cut the taxes. I mean, yeah. he can't just willy-nilly cut them and explode the deficit. One of the things he wants to do is rebate them on exports and apply them to imports. Well, with a $500 billion trade deficit, that's a net gain of, you know, about $75 billion, uh, $100 billion, depending on what rate you set. And that's a lot of money. Uh, that can be used to lower rates overall. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. But uh, the question is whether it'll hold up in the WTO, because you can rest assured the lawyers over in Europe are writing, scribbling away right now. How yeah. do we maintain our advantage on the Americans? We can rebate the value-added tax. They can't rebate theirs. How do we maintain our advantage? But the real tax cost that I'm talking about, and the, which has excited everybody in America and the market, is personal income tax cuts. That's what's getting everybody excited, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't think they're a bit, they may be a bit overexcited. Remember this, the top 20% of earners pay 83% of the taxes. And Mnuchin says they're not getting a tax cut, they're just going to get exemptions and whatnot, you know, reduced or capped or what have you, and then we'll lower the rates, but they're not going to get a net tax cut. Well, you know, cutting taxes uh, with regard to the other 80% who pay only 17% of the taxes is not going to be enough to move the economy and move the market. They're going to have to move off this nonsense that somehow or other, you know, cutting taxes on some entrepreneur that makes $400,000 a year in New York and is paying federal, state, and city taxes at 60%, you know, is a bad thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> Why are you throwing cold water on my hoped for and promised tax cuts? I'm not throwing cuts? cold water on what is. I'm just saying what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, point I'm trying to make is that rationalizing the tax system so we don't have all these deductions and exemptions and accountants and lawyers and so forth, and we just have straightforward profit making on lower rates is a good thing. That's really where it's at. Economists like elegance, simplicity, transparency, and if they give us that, or more of it, where we have less of it, that's good, and that'll help the economy grow. Okay, Peter, I hear you. Okay. I'm sorry it's not exactly like you want it, but yeah. I mean, I'm an I've got a burden. I'm an economist. It's like you're yeah, British, you, you know? <laughs> at least you're tenured. Now, uh, we had <laughs> Grover Norquist, the, the anti-tax oh. guy himself. He was on the show right before New Year. He said, America, he's, he's the president of Americans for Tax Reform. He I know, said, Grover. <laughs> God, God. He said, liberals treat the government like it's Santa Claus. Listen to this, Peter. As I was talking to my daughters about they wanted certain things, and I said, well, they're very expensive. And they said, well, Santa will bring them. It's free. <laughs> and when you hear liberals talk about getting government money, uh, they act as if it was free, as if... It wasn't first taken by force from some American and run through the government, but the government didn't create that wealth. It didn't create those dollars. They took them by force. Well, why don't you comment on that? The government did not create that wealth. That's well, Grover's absolutely right. He's a friend of mine. As I said, I know him, and he's absolutely right. Uh, the Democrats are a very peculiar group of people. It seems as though when they take money from us and they spend it, it's a good thing, and it's a benefit. But if the government gives us back the money it's snatched from us in the first place, it's inflationary, budget-busting, deleterious, you know, vice-ridden, and so forth. Somehow or other, the Democrats have got 45% of the voting population convinced that it's a bad thing for people to keep money they earn by working hard. Grover's absolutely right. Okay, let's suppose we get the kind of tax cuts that you were talking about. I mean, yeah. uh, you, you laid it out. Let's suppose we get that. Would we still get 4% economic growth some way down the road? We're going to have to have other changes as well. We're going to have to have improvements in the regulatory environment. That's the difference between today and in Reagan's era. Reagan was able to cut taxes absolutely. That's going to be more difficult for Donald. But rationalize the tax structure like Reagan did. He can do that. But he's got to get more regulatory relief. And that's going to be very hard. And that's where I'm a little skeptical, really. Uh, Carl Icahn 
working part-time, showing up one day a week while he takes care of his investments at the age of 80, is going to somehow or other untangle this bowl of spaghetti, which is really terribly complicated. Just identifying all the regulations that need to go away. You know, for example, at labor, we know that the new guy at labor is going to not do anything to hurt fast food producers. The minimum wage isn't going above $9 an hour. But is he going to do something about all of those provisions that make my life miserable as a small businessman? That keep, you know, that have, yeah. that have made it the, the fastest growing area of small business is single proprietorships because nobody wants to hire anybody thanks to the that's Department right. of Labor. That's Getting right. at that, that's what counts. Okay, Peter, back to the classroom for you. You'll see us again later this week. Thank you very much indeed, Peter Marisi. Take care.